Hey guys, you're about to watch a video that will reveal the growth of a garden which will have tomatoes, peas, and corn in it over a period of 68 days. The tomatoes are transplants, the corn and the peas were planted by seed, and what you're seeing here right now is Chase helping build the planter that we're going to put our seeds in with his bunny interspersed in some video once in a while. So about the two and a half minute mark, you're going to start to see the seeds as they sprout. And then on a day by day growth, we're going to measure and uh, see the seeds produce fruits until we actually are able to eat it. So enjoy Chase as he builds his planter as we uh, go through the process of planting and uh, videotaping the growth each day until we come to the end where we finally get to enjoy eating some corn and some peas along the way. If you're interested in building one of these planter boxes that you're viewing right now, you can go to our station at Growing Up Chase where we have a video showing the supplies necessary including the tools and the lumber necessary to build a planter box. And here Chase is getting some grass clippings to put inside of the planter box along with our bunny that we just enjoy having in our backyard as well. Having a bunny in the backyard just makes it so much more enjoyable as we go out to tend to our garden and plant our seeds, uh, water them, take the weeds out. It's fun to look along the skyline to see the mountains of southern New Mexico and to see Chase enjoy his bunny and just to have some wildlife as we call it in the backyard even though it's a domesticated little bunny. We sure enjoy seeing him. Here's Pops and Chase and this is a little cherry tree you can see we have two cherries and those are the only two cherries that came off the tree that year or any other year. So that was the entire harvest of that tree. This is all happening during the time when COVID-19 kind of shut the world down. So we're enjoying our backyard as most people in the United States and probably around the world are. Uh, and here Nan and Pops are with Chase and we're getting ready to go over to the other side of the house to see the start of the plants and then from there we'll watch them grow day by day. Seven days after planting, here we go, we're starting to see the sprouts of the peas and the corn. The tomatoes are transplants from Home Depot. One of the important things that you should remember when you plant a new garden is it needs to stay moist at all times, especially if you're in direct sunlight because those little seedlings do not want to dry out. What I'm trying to show here is the distance between the seedlings. Uh, what we're going to find out later on the, in the video is that these are actually much too close because they're going to crowd each other out and I'd encourage you to plant your seeds with at least 10 inches between each of your plants so as it grows there's plenty of sunlight to get adequate size on your ears of corn. Day 13 here, since we've planted the seeds, uh, garden's looking good. Uh, we're trying to keep everything moist. Seedlings are about an inch tall or so. We're gonna need to build a trellis to uh, help the peas grow upwards. At this point in time, they don't need it quite yet, but we'll probably need to build that in about two weeks. And as mentioned, we're about an inch tall right now in all of our plants. The whole garden's doing well. We're located in southern New Mexico and it's in the early parts of March. So it's springtime in North America here in the United States. And the nights are cool, the days are getting warm, so it's great growing conditions for the small plants. Uh, so the peas are thriving as well as the corn and we're probably about a week away now from having to build a trellis for our pea plants. Our irrigation system consists of some half inch a black 
sprinkler irrigation tubing that goes down the center about 18 inches apart. And from there, we took our uh, misters and attached those into the sprinkler tubing of which we use every day to keep the ground moist. The garden's taken hold. The tomato plants are starting to green up a little bit. As you saw, the peas are thriving and the corn's about three inches tall. All of the plants have good color. And Chase is here helping us clean the pathway. Uh, keeping the garden organized is a task that we like to do and uh, we just enjoy being together. Chase and I are trying to make this as an organic garden as possible so it uh, has nothing more in it than the organic material found from the potting soil that we purchased from the garden store along with some grass clippings and some pecan shells. This is how we water our garden. We hook up the water hose to the tubing that feeds the sprinklers in our planter boxes and that's how we give our uh, little plants a drink of water every day. Since we live in the land of pecan trees, we have some pecans that we took the shells that were crushed up and we used that as a little bit of compost, added it last night just to hold some of the moisture in the soil. Okay, now it's time to build a trellis and what you're going to see, we took some PVC pipe, three quarter inch, and then we took a saw, made little notches and ran the stereo wire around which held the stereo wire in place, which will give the pea plants a chance to grow upwards. Hey Chase, it's springtime in southern New Mexico, so let's play a little bit and enjoy some family time. Day 27 and the peas are starting to attach themselves to the trellis. The carrots aren't doing too well. The corn is looking mighty fine. I like to see the leaves blowing in the wind and it's about five inches tall today. The corn is growing about a half an inch a day at this point. We're at day 29. It's just about seven inches tall. And as we get uh, Two weeks down the path from today you're going to start to see it's growing in upwards of one to two inches a day but currently at day 29 we're seeing growth of about a half an inch a day with with the tomatoes looking real strong at this point the peas are just climbing that trellis and that was something that I learned this year for the first time. Without a trellis, uh, production on peas will be lessened dramatically. It's enjoyable to see how the peas really grow over the next few days. You can see that the corn is uh, taking off as well, about eight inches, and over the next couple days, it really takes a growth spurt, but so do the peas. The peas really climb that trellis, so make sure if you have peas, have them on a trellis or something that they can grow on. The peas on the trellis are thriving and the peas behind that don't have a trellis to grow on, they are suffering. What I did find out is that uh, here on day 32 the corn is 10 inches tall and as the heat really starts to set in, as the days get hotter, the corn starts to thrive. So. Uh, hot days don't bother the corn as long as you keep its roots wet and it gets plenty of sunlight. 
About four weeks after we saw the first sprouts emerge from the ground, the plants have really taken off at this point and seem to be doing uh, a tremendous amount of growing uh, every 24 hour period. Can you believe it? On day 34, the corn is now 13 inches tall. I had to add to the trellis here because the peas were outgrowing the initial wires that I had put on the PVC pipe. The little carriage you'll see on the bottom left hand corner of the screen, they never amounted to anything. That's about as much as they ever did. And as you can see the corn grows, it's growing now about an inch per day. Here comes Chase and Chase loves to eat peas. He likes to take the pot and open them up and put the peas in his hand and eat them raw. So. He's checking on a daily basis to see how our peas are doing and he's evaluating the corn to make sure that we're giving it plenty of water so we can have a productive crop this year. Speaking of water, we've been watering lightly every day, but what it's done is it's made the roots stay shallow and not go deep to find water so the corn actually has too shallow of a root system so we're going to start to water more deeply and not as often. I think we're going to go to a three-day watering schedule at this point. You can start to see that the corn is competing for sunlight so next year we're going to put some more space in between the planting of the seeds. Today 38 days and we're 19 inches tall. Corn seems to do well in the higher temperatures here in the uh, south and in the midwest. Uh, 94 degrees and it grew 2 inches overnight. It's time to build a new planter box, this time for some of our root vegetables, including our carrots and our onions, and Chase is going to help us add some compost to uh, make for some good soil. It's pretty cool, but if you haven't noticed, there are some pea pods developing on our pea plants off that trellis. Chase has got this measuring thing down. He's excited to see how much the corn grew overnight. With no basketball camps this summer, there's not much to do other than play in our garden and build some stuff. And so I'm glad we're getting the experience together. And uh, I think he's going to make a pretty good backyard farmer someday. We're wanting those carrots to grow, but they just don't seem to have enough sunlight. It kind of goes without saying our garden is doing well, but it's overcrowding uh, itself because there's no place for the plants to grow outwardly at this point. So I think our plant size is going to suffer along with our fruit production in the end. One of the beautiful aspects of living in New Mexico is all of the wildlife. And so next week, Chase and I, we're going to go turkey hunting with our family and see if we can find some wild turkeys. Pretty cool here, day 46, and our peas are ready to harvest. So if you wanted to get some and eat them in your hand raw, eat the whole pod, put them on a salad or cook them, it's time to do so. So we took a few days off from the garden so we could go turkey hunting. It's been three days since we last measured the corn when it was 30 inches tall and on day 46 it is now 4 inches taller at 34 inches tall. Go corn go!
One of the greatest things of growing a backyard garden is the way it brings the family together. So Pops and Chase get to enjoy some peas right off the vine today. Notice as, as we add to our trellis, the peas keep growing upward. It's day 48 since we planted our seeds and the corn today is 41 inches tall. It's fun watching the peas grow, but the take home message for having a healthy pea crop is to keep the roots moist and give it a trellis to grow on. World's biggest tomato plants are growing at the end of our garden here without the sign of a tomato. We're on day 50 since planting our seeds and we're about two weeks from harvesting our first ears of corn. The tassels are just about ready to emerge on some of the corn stalks. It's day 51 and the corn is now 46 inches tall. Here on day 53, the peas are still doing well, climbing the trellis, producing every day as they have been for the last two weeks. Uh, you can see that the pods are filling up nicely and they really should be picked on a daily basis so they can continue to thrive. The carrots, as we can see, they never did do much because of lack of sunlight. And the corn is looking good, but suffering to some extent because of the lack of a deep root system along with being planted too close together and the tomato plants though looking healthy there still aren't producing. On day 53 the corn is now 47 inches tall. Here on day 54 if you look closely at the very top of each corn stalk, you'll see some tassels starting to form, which means that we are getting ready for the formation of ears of corn. Today is day 56 of our garden and the peas are looking a little bit dry and that comes from two reasons. One, we were trying not to water the corn as frequently so the peas therefore dried out a little bit. Plus the days are getting extremely hot with uh, the high temperatures being over 100 degrees each day. It should be real soon now here on day 56 that we see the ears of corn forming and if I would take the camera closely and zoom in on the stalks of corn. We probably would see some beginning stages of uh, ears of corn forming. And on day 56, the corn is now about 54 inches tall. The tassel was responsible for making pollen. The pollen then falls onto the uh, little hairs that are attached to each of the kernels of corn within the husk. And so what we're gonna see here 
is the pollen formation by the uh, tassels so we get uh, proper uh, filling of each corn kernel. Day 59, peas are looking good. We've started to water them a little bit more since they were looking dry a couple days ago. You can see the soil there is a little bit drier for the corn, which we're trying to keep. And then the tassels are showing up uh, a little bit more each day. And it shouldn't be more than just a few days before we start to see the process of pollination occur uh, with the corn. It's day 59 and the corn measures at 54 inches tall. Over the next week, we're going to try to film every day, but if not every other day, because there's not a lot of change going on on the plants other than the formation of pollen, pollen uh, coming out of the uh, tassel and then the little hairs that are found on top of each ear of corn, which leads down to each kernel. Uh, we'll see those form here also during this week as well. We're coming into the final week of growth on our corn plants and so a week from now we will actually be going into harvest. As we've seen in this video, the corn is planted too close together so the only corn stalks making ears of corn are on the edges where those plants are getting enough sunlight. Next year, we're going to use up a little bit more space for our corn plants and make sure there's 10 to 12 inches between each of the seedlings. Here on day 62, we're gonna do a little bit of hand pollination where we shake the tassel, get some of the yellow pollen, and then we sprinkle it on the hairs uh, at the top of the ear of corn to make sure that pollination is occurring on each of the ears of corn that are forming. The pollen comes off real easy, as you can see in this uh, video clip, it uh, gathers at the very base of the uh, tassel. I think if we would have continued to build height to that trellis, those peas would have gone to the moon. Can you see? They don't look like they're going to slow down anytime soon. And look at that. There's a beautiful ear of corn. As you can see, the peas are starting to yellow due to the extreme temperatures because now we're getting over 100 degrees each day and the garden is found in between two stucco homes where the heat probably gets a little higher than that as well. The corn is thriving in the heat and if we had more space, I think our production would be fantastic. And then the tomatoes, they just needed to be pruned and maintained in a different way uh, because there's our lone tomato that we might get this year. Uh, so we're going to do a little research ourselves on YouTube to find out what we need to do to make sure our tomato crop comes into uh, better production next year. But our corn's looking good and we're just about ready to harvest. Notice it's on the perimeters of our corn crop where we actually made ears of corn. 
I love seeing that our corn plants have made ears of corn, but you'll notice that they're small. And again, that has to do with the amount of spacing and sunlight that they were able to get. Next year, watch out, they're gonna be twice this size. And the day is finally here. 68 days after we planted our first seed, we get to enjoy an ear of corn along with others that we're going to pick and take inside for dinner tonight. It's been fun growing our peas and our corn and our tomato plants in the backyard. We've grown as a family and we've grown a garden. So thanks Chase, that's a beautiful ear of corn. I think he's gonna enjoy that one for dinner tonight himself. It's been a great experience watching the corn grow each day along with the peas. And it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Thanks, Chase. <laughs> You've been watching Chase's Garden on Growing Up Chase. As a garden grows, so does an understanding of our existence. The plants reflect our lives and just go through the process more quickly. From seed to growth, to fruit, then back to the earth, each stage of life has its beauty. During your life, practice patience, kindness, be thrifty, and plant a small garden each spring when you can. I love you, Chase. Dad.